Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and our expert guest today is Peter Pasternak. He is uh, the founder of Foundations Design, which started in 2005 with a dream of creating superior homes for the residents of Atlanta. Uh, personal experiences with previous builders, both positive and negative, left indelible marks on founders Peter Pasternak and Brian Tro, and helped emphasize the company's <coughs> philosophy of creating a superior product while delivering exceptional customer service. The personal friendship between Peter and Brian is built on trust and integrity, which in turn is at the core of their business. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you, Neil. Uh, I appreciate you inviting me on the show today. Well, I'm glad to have you. So let's get right into it. Uh, tell me a little bit about you uh, and who you help. Great. So a little bit about myself. I'm a graduate of the University of Georgia. Go dog. Um I have an undergrad master's degree in accounting. I uh, started my work career at Price Waterhouse. Um, I was a banker for 20 years. Uh, in 2004, I said I got in touch with my entrepreneurial side, um, owned a couple businesses. My now business partner, Brian Tro, was my personal trainer. Uh, we became good friends. Uh, in 2005, as Brian's like a little brother to me, I asked him what he wanted to do when he grew up, mm -hmm. and he said real estate. So we started our company, and within a year, we landed a, a role on A&E's Flip This House. And at the end of the first season we were on, uh, they came and uh, asked Brian and I to be the lead character. So some people would recognize me from A&E's Flip This House. Um, later on, if you want to talk about that, you actually go online and watch some of the um, some of the shows. But Brian and I, our company, we started as real estate investors, and as um, most businesses between 2005 and now 2016 had changed our business model a little bit, we are now, we focus more on the construction and building um, of new homes for um, both investors and for homeowners, I'm doing quite a bit of work in town, so anybody's looking for a home built or um, has a house that maybe we do a lot of renovation for um, people who are pregnant, who realize they need some uh, more room in their house, we do that. And um, then of course in 2010, um, we created Real Estate Connections, which is a networking event held the first Thursday of every month um, that we average over 300 people. So I'm very passionate about helping connecting people in addition to our company, helps build and renovate uh, houses for both investors and homeowners. Wonderful. I've been to your Real Estate Connections event, and it is a wonderful event. As you say, hundreds of people there uh, connecting and sharing their stories about real estate. Now, it's uh, interesting that you're a numbers guy, but you didn't really have a background in real estate, um, tell me how that quickly came about and how you got picked up with A and E. So you know, it, it's I always say I really define myself as not in real estate, but more as an entrepreneur that likes to make money mm -hmm. and never apologize for that. So you know, Brian, um, like I said, when uh, Brian and I talked about getting into real estate at that time, I owned seven companies that I was running. And um, the biggest was a commercial printing company. And honestly, when we started, I wanted something for Brian. Um, and, uh, you know, he's the licensed contractor builder for our company. And, you know, I figured I would work, you know, two or three hours a week and uh, help uh, really run the business. And but, you know, once I get involved in something, I kind of dove into it. And so I started watching um, television and some of the, and really Flip This House was really the original house about flipping. Um, since that time, there's a lot of what you call um, kind of copycats. But I realized early on that as an investor, you need a realtor that has a different knowledge set. 
That's actually one of the speeches I give to a lot of real estate offices. And so I reached out to the realtor who was on the show. We started um, using her, and um, they wanted to start showing the houses that we were doing because um, the flips we were doing, we really rebuilt. I mean, we were knocking the houses um, down, knocking down walls, adding square footage, and so it made good television. And then at the end of the year, really what happened is I think the network liked the interaction of Brian and I, Brian being more right brain creative, me being more left brain business like. And you know, the rest is history. They it, they went well. The um, product placement people um, liked putting the products in our homes because they showed well because of the quality. And so. Um, yeah, I guess you could say we might have been the right place at the right time, but a lot of the hard work we have had done previously helped us get to to that step. And you know, I specialize in getting people in the media as well with with our company. But explain how that just helped and exploded your business. What happened after you were on uh, Flip This House? Well, you know, like one of the things I was very clear on, you know, being kind of a, a middle-aged person was I never wanted to be on TV to be on TV. Uh, being a businessman, I was clear I wanted to be on TV to market Brian and my company foundations. And so um, one of the things I w- was clear with the network up front was, you know, a lot of people think reality TV is like total reality, and it's still about um, – ratings and having a show. And I said, look, if you're looking for me to be out there and kind of yelling at Brian, like some of these other things, I'm not doing that. Brian and I are 50, 50 business partners and I have too much respect and TV will come and go. So, you know, if you want us, I'm, this is a, a line I'm drawing in the sand. So, you know, when you have a million and a half to two million people watching you and our company, our bio, we're on the A&E website, Um, people start to know you. And uh, when you're out there looking for business and you're one of the people, it gives you a heads up because people, like I said, they're in their living room watching you and they feel like they know you. They feel like you're the expert. You have the credibility. And, you know, that helped me both in speaking at a lot of different real estate offices and real estate organizations. And, you know, even though the show is not currently on, although, again, you can watch – episodes online it's just you know people are under the perception that you have to be really good or you would not be on television right it definitely positions you at the top of your game and now uh you know obviously it has a great deal in enhancing your business but tell me what you do now what is the biggest problem that you solve for your clients I would say, you know, one of the things, most of our clients are probably our homeowners who are either looking to build a a new home or add square footage. And I think the biggest problem we have is when most couples are like a Mara of Brian and I, where there's usually one that's more creative, um, has some vision of what they want, and then usually the other person is a little more uh, budget-driven. And so our ability to address both the budget and what needs to be done, and and Brian's just a visual perfectionist. I mean, he can go in and he can see things that a lot of people can't. They can't see what the house can be transformed into or built. And so, you know, we've got pictures and portfolios of before and after pictures of what we've been able to do to houses. And so, and, and the other thing is because we've been doing this for a while, Neil, the important thing is about setting expectations, how long it's going to take to get it done that are realistic so everybody is on the same page um, and you know people are able to rely on the experience both from a budget and creativity that Brian and I bring to the table. So obviously they put a lot of trust in you that you are the expert, you know what you're doing, and Brian as well. But what are some of the fears or misconceptions that they have when they're hiring you to do their their rebuild or building a new home? I would say, you know, the biggest concern a lot of time is time. What is the timeline like? Like I said, uh, for a lot of the, the couples that were um, – Doing renovations for a lot of times, somebody is pregnant, and that's necessitated a 
um, adding square footage, bedrooms. Um, and so uh, time is of the essence. And so they're worried about whether we can really get the house done in the time we say we're going to get it done. And then, you know, one of the things we always explain to people is, look, um, you might have a preconceived notion of your budget, but we know what it costs. So a lot of times we start with somebody's budget and then it's kind of making it realistic, the scope of work to make sure it matches the budget. Um, because sometimes people, if you haven't done it before, do not have an idea of what certain things cost to get it done properly. Yeah, I know from watching the shows, it always seems to be a, a budget thing, and you know, you're know you you're the guy with the numbers, but there's many problems that might come up, especially if you're doing uh, a flip or a, a rebuild, maybe rather than building a new home, you know, you know how that's gonna work, but what are some of the issues that come up with uh, adding an extension or increasing the square footage, what's m one of the most common issues that come up that really, you know, put a, a, a big hole in that budget? I would say that, uh, well, I would say this. When you open up walls, which you have to do to add square footage or change a footprint of uh, in the house, you're going to find stuff you don't like. And that's why really uh, new builds are easier because you're not starting with a with a footprint. Typically, the biggest budget um, buster is when you open up the walls. It's the mechanicals, and what I mean by that, the mechanicals are your plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. And sometimes you don't know until you open up walls um, how that looks from the previous person. So sometimes it it can't be fixed, and it has to be new. And so um, you know, one of the things that I tell people is based on the scope of work, um, you've got to have at least a 10% contingency for things that are going to go wrong that you may not know exactly, but there are very few projects that I've done that when you're opening up walls, you don't find something. And what's so interesting is a few years ago, um, several of the lenders that have renovation loans, and what I mean by that is the loan covers, let's say, both like um, the mortgage plus any improvements you're going to do, they started adding 10% contingencies um, in the budgets because they realized people could easily run out of money. And so I kind of laughed. I think it was a little bit before my time because I realized that, you know, after about a year of doing this, that um, you had to have that contingency in your budget. <laughs> right. So you're there. You're actually getting the work done in the day-to-day, -day, but the mortgage bank bankers are sitting there just uh, playing with the numbers. So, so uh, give me uh, an example of something that stands out, maybe so something that you're most proud of over your years, uh, where you've been able to go in and really help somebody. What difference does it make to, you know, have a, have a new home or have a complete uh, redesign of a home? Sure. So I would say, um, you know, probably one of our, one of my favorite stories is um, a, a new house that we built for a good friend of ours um, in Bucket. And it was actually very close to the house that we built for Brian a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, they had a little bit of a vision and were a little bit concerned of what it was going to look like. And, uh, we kind of helped them through that. And, and actually, originally, we had to figure out whether there was an existing brick ranch on the property, whether we were going to tear it down and build new, or we were going to take the footprint and open up walls and renovate. And so we kind of actually went back and forth, but we felt that based on where it was in Buckhead, um, that it made more sense and they would get a higher profit when it came time to sell by tearing it down and doing the new build. And, you know, we watched the process and how happy they were, but um, the day that um, we finished the build, um, we found out that the uh, wife was uh, pregnant and they kind of teared up because they said, you know, this was the dream house and it was really special. We were able to build it for them. So it was just, you know, one of those, Maybe you had to be the, a very nice emotional aha moment. Mm. Uh, and of course, the house is where you spend most of your time. 
uh, you know, and to create something that people just fall in love with, obviously, has got to be very gratifying. Now, Peter, you started in the real estate market right before the crash. Tell me, uh, you know, how I know Atlanta was definitely affected uh, very badly, but uh, how did that affect your business and what's the market looking like today? So when we started in 2005, it was probably about two or three years before things got really bad. Um, Atlanta did not get hit as badly as some places. But, you know, think about this. The places that had the highest appreciation in the 1990s and 2000s, places like Miami and San Francisco and Dallas, as high as they went, they had the biggest flows. And so Atlanta was a little more steady in their um, increase. And so their decrease kind of was like a mirror and went down proportionately. So even though Atlanta was hit, it wasn't hit as badly as some of the other metropolitan cities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Brian and I were lucky because we didn't have a lot of inventory uh, for our build. Uh, one of the things being on TV did is people were looking at our houses when we were building them. So there were a lot of eyes, which for a lot of people, the hardest thing is to get people to come to your house and see it. So, you know, that was an advantage. So when the market went, started to go down, we weren't stuck with, you know, 10, 15, 20 houses and our prices went down. And so um, one of the things we did during the first couple of years when the market was down was, um, you know, I was doing some analysis on where I thought when the house was ready what the decrease in the um, price would be. And so when I bought it, we took that into consideration. So you always make your money on the buy. And so it, it's, it's really kind of being able to go, you know, six months ahead to kind of figure out where I thought the market was going to be. And so, um, you know, we weathered the storm. Um, we're actually stronger now. And, of course, one of the things we started to do was um, – in 2008, actually the laws changed in Georgia. Before that, you could flip a home. You didn't have to be a licensed contractor to pull your permit. Then it changed. And, of course, Brian, for us, went and um, took the classes and is, you know, state um, certified as our licensed contractor and builder. But we started having to let people know that we could also build homes for homeowners in addition to doing our own. So right now we still do some flips. We do some stuff for other investors, but I would say the majority of what we do are for homeowners. And that's where the relationships with realtors who know that we could build that house for um, their clients or um, couples who are looking to expand, um, reach out to us. And it's really being known in the community and, you know, doing kind of a remarketing and rebranding so that people know that, yes, we can do new builds and high-end renovations for other folks. Well, you're definitely known in the community. And, uh, you know, let's talk about the real estate connections for a minute. Uh, how did that come about? And what kind of difference has that made to you and your marketing and your business? Great. So, you know, I've always been one that um, never really met a stranger, and I love being out. I love networking. I love going to events. And, you know, one of the things that I thought was missing was I'd go to events, and I looked, and there were very few people that I felt like I could do business with. And so, you know, the beauty of being an entrepreneur is if you see an opportunity, you can seize on it. So October 2010, Brian, I started Real Estate Connections, and um, our thought was we wanted a networking event that revolved around a home or commercial property and that everybody there would either touch it or provide services. And so, um, you know, October will be our six-year anniversary. It's a monthly event, the first Thursday of every month. Uh, one of the things I'm proud of is we have not missed a month in um, uh, close to our six-year anniversary uh, we're averaging over 300 people, and it's really a nice mixture. Uh, we get a lot of realtors. Uh, every month we feature a different real estate office, so 
that gets a lot of uh, new blood. But, you know, being out there in the community, I teach classes. I teach class on how to use LinkedIn uh, and networking to grow your database. I teach, teach a class on real estate investing. By going out to real estate offices and organizations, it just keeps me attuned to what's happening in the market. And so, you know, when you have 300 people and you're the host of the event, um, you know, I get to meet everybody. If I don't know you when you come in, I make sure I come up, introduce myself, find out who you are, and, you know, wh- what types of people are you looking to meet at the event. And so some people would say I'm like a business matchmaker. Knowing who's in the room, I take people and I go and I introduce them to others and, you know, tell them why I think, um, why I've introduced them and um, let them take the conversation from there. So it's just, it's just help from a, a continued credibility and being out there and being, you know, around other positive, like-minded people on a continuous basis is only good things can happen. Yeah, it definitely is a fantastic event to get all people involved in real estate together. Now, you did mention realtors, but what other industries around real estate come to your events? So we have um, lenders, uh, mortgage and bankers, uh, the real estate uh, attorneys, their uh, investors, um, there's general contractors, there's insurance people, there's home inspectors, um, there's movers. Um, you know, all the things that you would need if you were a realtor and you needed, let's say, to build a team for the people who are um, your clients that you can refer that to. Um, or if you're, you know, you're a contractor or insurance or home inspectors and you're meaning to meet with realtors, it's kind of like a circle. And there's so many spheres of influence who are there that it's a really nice mixture. Yeah, definitely. There's, uh, you know, so many things that you need to do when it comes to uh, either rebuilding or creating a new home uh, and so many people involved uh, being that central figure that you are that knows everybody and can connect everybody is certainly a, a huge value that you offer to everybody within the real estate industry in Atlanta. Now, let's talk about the Atlanta market for a minute. It's been uh, okay. a few years since, uh, you know, eight years. I can't believe it's been so long already since mm-hmm. the crash. But what's today, what is the market looking at uh, like in Atlanta right now? I would, you know, I'm always, uh, I always preface when I get asked that question, you know, is you have to take a look at sometimes areas by areas. You know, when you make a blanket statement, Sometimes people take that, and I think that's true everywhere in the state, and it's not. Now, the market has rebounded. Um, it's made it kind of adjustment. Um, and if you talk to most people in the real estate community, 2016 is probably one of their best years that they've had. Now, if you listen to a lot of um, economists, and some different people, Uh, some people feel that in 12 to 18 months, there's going to be a little bit, Now I emphasize a little bit of a slowdown. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, It's just like the stock market, but prices have gone up. Um, Inventory levels have gone down, although they've gotten a little bit bigger. Uh, A lot of people remember 2010, you'd be on 285, and you see those signs, you know, 110 or 120,000 homes available. Um, now it's closer to about the 40,000 range. And so, um, you know, the last 12 to 18 months, because of all inventory, it's been a little bit more of a seller's market. Um, typically define a seller's versus a buyer's market by the amount of inventory. Uh, six months of inventory is considered a break even when you have less. It's typically a seller's market. If you have more than that, it's typically a buyer's market. So uh, the market has improved. Um, again, uh, areas by area, uh, you, you always have to be careful of where you are because it's still location, location, location. Now, uh, with me driving around Atlanta for the past couple of years, I've seen a lot of uh, the old houses being knocked down and these nice new hundred thousands of dollar houses uh, being built up. Uh, is that happening all over the city or is it just in such areas? Um, you know, we're doing a lot of those, but you see a lot more of those in town. 
And the reason you see those impounds is when you're typically doing a teardown and a new build, you've got to have the prices of the new build have to support the cost of what's going to be to build plus the lot. Um, and so if you're, if you're in like a newer area, it wouldn't work because there hasn't been enough appreciation of the property that if you knock something down, the cost to rebuild uh, would put you in a place where it would equal what the comps are in there. So, you know, you see a lot of teardowns and new builds. We're doing a lot in Buckhead, Virginia Highlands, um, Morningside. Um, you see a lot of those. And, and like Brookhaven, of course. Um, again, you see some in some of these other areas, but most of the um, teardowns and new builds are closer to being in town. Mm. So we've covered uh, a great deal of information here today. Peter, if there's something that we haven't covered that you'd like to mention, what would that be? Um, you know, I'd like to invite anybody who's listening that's involved in the real estate world or provide services to attend one of the real estate connections. Again, it's the first Thursday of the month. Uh, it's from 6 to 9 p.m. at Loca Luna in Midtown over um, uh, right in Amsterdam Walk. Uh, it's a great way of, of meeting people and um, getting your connections. Um, and if you come, make sure you introduce yourself uh, to me. I'd love to meet you and find out how I can help you. And the first Thursday of the month, next month, is going to be on the 1st. Is that right? Yep. Yes. So the rest of the year, the first in September, September 1st, October's is October 6th. Again, October will be our six year anniversary. Uh, November is the third and then December is September 1st. So uh, any of those days or all those days, we'd love to have you come and, um, you know, take a look. You feel a lot of the high energy and you feel uh, get to meet quality uh, people. And I'd love to, to meet you and, and again, see how I can help. Well, I'll definitely have to come out to Local Luna. I haven't been there yet and then join you and all the hundreds of other people in the real estate industry. But for people who uh, haven't made it out or want to get in contact with you, what is the best way to get in contact with you? They can they can give me a call um, and they can call me at 404-275-8087. Again, it's uh, Peter. Last name is Pasternak, 404-275-8087. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and talking with us today, Peter. Uh, thanks very much for being on the show and sharing all your knowledge. Thank you for having me. And if there's anything I can uh, do to help, I'm always available. Great. Well, to our audience, thank you for listening. If you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.